Good afternoon, folks. Hey, so uh, we are from Comcast. My name is John Brzezowski. This is Sean Collins, Anthony Vega. Um, my role at Comcast is basically to, for, for the past almost 10 years, I've been running the V6 program at Comcast. And over the past many years with Anthony and recently with Sean, um, Sean is a senior engineer and a Neutron developer. Anthony is a network engineer, and he's also contributing to OpenStack. We've been, uh, we've been working very hard to make IP6 support available for our internal use within OpenStack. And our, our goal here today is to share what we've done with you um, and also help to kind of raise level of awareness because we think we really do need a lot more support within the OpenStack community as far as V6 is concerned. Um, so a little bit of background, if you don't mind, from kind of the bigger picture point of view. Not sure how many people in the audience here are really familiar with this, but you may have heard V4 is running out. Um, maybe you don't care, but I can tell you, we do. Um, it's largely what I've been you know, spending a lot of time for the past decade almost working on. Back in 2011, IANA and uh, APNIC both ran out. IANA is the global body that, that kind of governs address, addressing for the world. APNIC serves Asia Pacific. RIPE subsequently in 2012 uh, you know, met a similar fate. And just a few weeks ago here in the Aran region in North America, uh, they too found themselves in a situation where they, they dipped into their final slash eight. Uh, that is the current definition of depletion, which basically means that you know, when you go back to these registries, you can no longer request the, or, or expect to get the same size blocks that you got you know, previously. So from our point of view, we saw this a long time ago. Like I said, about 10, you know, about 10 years ago in 2005 is when I started Comcast. Um, and from our point of view, V6 is truly you know, we see that as, as kind of the, the future for us from a, from a growth, uh, really allowing us to kind of develop kind of services and, and products that we want to take to our customers in a way that's going to give them the best experience. Um, as you may have taken note over the past couple of years, there's been, there's been a lot of industry activity from a V6 point of view. Um, we've been part of that. And you'll notice that V6 deployment has certainly picked up. I remember looking back a year, from, uh, a year ago when we were in Portland, um, there's, there's just a heck of a lot more people who are talking to us about V6 support, which we think is a really great thing. Uh, but at the same time, we're also finding that the absence of V4 and still the, the kind of the aggressive growth on the V6 front is still making it so that some folks have to deploy transition technologies. As you'll see here at the bottom, we make reference to carry grade NAT, just one of a host of many that we think people kind of should pay close attention to because we do believe that it will affect the way that people access to things that you build on the OpenStack infrastructure. Next slide. So again, our goal is ultimately to relieve our dependency on IPv4. And we've spent you know, a long time really chipping away at that. The most recent chapter for us is really what we're doing here in, in uh, OpenStack. We can tell you from very long and sometimes painful experience that the path to v6 is not overnight. Uh, we've had many conversations with people over the years and tell them, you know, when you decide to deploy v6, you know maybe it's not right now, it is not something that you can just do, you know, you go to bed on a Friday night, wake up on a Monday morning and decide that you're gonna flip it on. It just doesn't work that way. And I think I'm preaching to the choir when it comes to kind of how technology has to be deployed in incremental fashion. One of the things that you've probably seen from our perspective over the years is that um, one of the key aspects of our deployment at Comcast, particularly from a broadband perspective, has been to enable dual stack uh, connectivity to all of our customers. In a few slides, I'll kind of give you some tidbits and some facts around where we are and where we're going. Um, but ultimately, our goal is to really get to a place where we can run the network and offer the products and services in a V6-only uh, configuration. That's the goal, all right? So where we are and where we're continuing to move towards is moving to a place where we only use V4 where we have to. Um, and we want to we ultimately leverage IP6 to simplify everything. You know, so you may throw rotten fruit at me, maybe not, but you know, when we met within some of the meetings um, yesterday, some of the operator forums, you know, you know, and, and a lot of conversation that we, conversations we have here in the design meetings, we talked about NAT and, and all the things that kind of we're doing to kind of work around some of the challenges in that. That's exactly the, some of the space that we're trying to avoid from our perspective. And we feel V6 really is kind of a key network technology that allows us to restore that end to end. Uh, we are absolutely trying to avoid transi uh, transition technologies. We, rec you know, I think everybody recognizes that there are side effects um, to a lot of that, a lot of that technology. Um, and ultimately, like everything that we've done, our goal is really to start early, lay the groundwork, so that we can grow into, you know, we can grow with the technology and the solutions that are available uh, to us to, to ultimately to deliver 
uh, well, to, to, to deliver a proper customer experience um, to, our, you know, to our customers. Next slide, Phil. So it is May, I think, and uh, in just this past month, April, we completed the rollout of our deployment across the broadband network. So what does that mean? That means 100% of our broadband access network now is IPv6 you know, enabled with the capabilities for, for customers to walk up, plug in their own you know, retail device or use one of ours and have v6 on by default. Huge milestone for us um, and something that we're, we're very proud of and you know, I know that you'll hear about some more in, in, the, in the weeks to come. We are in fact the world's largest native IP6 deployment. 30% of our customers are actively provisioned with native dual stack. Huge, absolutely huge. If you go to um, worldip6launch.org, it's, an internet, it's a website that's run by the Internet Society. Every month they update and tabulate updates from all the participating service providers and show you, you know, what the deployment has look, is looking like. Our goal by the end of this year is to be at a place where we have 50% of our broadband customers being provisioned with native dual stack. So I want to make sure everybody's clear on that, right? So 100% of the footprint is available. It doesn't mean that 100% of the customers are actively using it, but what it does mean is that 30% of my customers have been provisioned with v6 and are are using it on a, on a daily basis. Um, many of our products and many of the things that we're doing from an infrastructure point of view already support v6, right? So broadband, residential broadband, you're hearing about right now. Um, commercial broadband services in the queue, you know, you know, higher end commercial services like Metro Ethernet all support v6 and there's a lot more to come, you know, where from, you know, from where we are right now. Um, all of our infrastructure supports v6. If it didn't, then we couldn't really take the steps that we're doing now to continue to enable products and services with v6 support. And of course, our customer facing infrastructure must support it as well. And, and this is obviously where things like OpenStack come into play. Next slide, Sean. So little, little plug for us here. Hopefully you guys don't mind the kind of the, the, the shameless plug here, but this is basically a picture that the Internet Society has put out for all the participating uh, service providers. And this is a graph of our growth from May of last year till, till now. And you'll notice that the growth is pronounced and, and there's more to come on, on this front. Next slide. So a little bit, I, I've given you a little bit of uh, introduction around what the, uh, you know, our deployment looks like right now. I wanna hand it over to Anthony. He'll enumerate some of the additional use cases that, that we're leveraging v6 for today. Anthony. So all this talk that John's uh, been telling you about uh, getting us onto dual stack and making sure that our entire deployment is dual stack uh, there's a reason for this. If we didn't go dual stack, we'd have a lot of issues around uh, you know, getting access to systems. And like, like John said, we're, we're trying to avoid transition technologies wherever possible. A couple of these real use cases, um, the X1 video set top box. Um, as I'm sure you saw in the Portland Summit, uh, Mark Mule gave a nice demonstration of the X1 set top box, which runs off the cloud. If we didn't have V6, it would be incredibly difficult for us to be able to deploy the large number of de devices that are needed to get the entire footprint to use something like this. They consume lots of IPs, and in order for this to work, we need to be able to talk to them, to manage them, and for them to interact with the rest of our network over a dual stack. Uh, CDN's a good one. If, if you want to get things on all kinds of devices, your iPad, your PC, or the set-top boxes that you use in your home, these need IP access. They need to be able to get this data from our core network, and for that to work, we've gotta have our CDN to be dual stack enabled in order for the data to get to you. Uh, messaging systems, things like email or voicemail or text message systems, uh, things that you can go to like Xfinity Connect, uh, all the products that we offer our customers need to be dual stacked uh, for the vision of a V4 minimal network to, to be possible. Uh, voice services is a good one. If you've got uh, Xfinity Voice, then the MTAs that you connect your phones to are going to need to be dual stack uh, in order to receive ser uh, service. Um, and lastly, but not least, the DNS platform. Uh, all of this talk about getting broadband enabled in the home on V6 could technically work with V4 DNS, but it wouldn't be ideal. Uh, and we really mean it. When we say we want everything to work in V6, we mean the whole stack from the bottom up, and that includes services like DNS, which are a very large part of the network. Um, so what's our approach been so far? Um, 
initially, it was just getting end-to-end -end functioning. We worked on the core, make sure the core passes packets properly, then we work on the edge devices and make sure that uh, we can get access from one end of the network to another, because really, that's the basis of the foundation. You can't do the management tools, you can't do the access tools, unless your core works properly. Um, V4, largely unchanged. We didn't really touch much of it. It's still operating the same way it's been operating for the past 20 odd years. Um, things have, you know, continued to stay pretty steady, but uh, we've added V6, and I'm pretty sure most of you haven't noticed any changes. Uh, that's a good thing. If we do our jobs right, you won't notice because there won't be any issues. And so far, that's been the case. Um, initially, you might need V4, right? Uh, some of your tools might not do V6 yet, but maybe the access works. Maybe you want to get access to your customers. Maybe you want them to go on V4 tr or V6 transport, but you can't really deal with the devices that they're on uh, to be able to maintain them without V4. It's okay. It's, it's going to be part of the process. Uh, getting to a dual stack world isn't something that you just dive into. It's something you have to go incre incrementally into. Um, but we're working to define the requirements for the cloud at this point. So. What do we need? What do we say when we need dual stack, right? Uh, there's a couple different ways you can approach this. You can say, Slack, we're done. You can get a V6 address and we're out. Um, that's okay for some people and that might actually be a good target for a first step. Uh, next step, well maybe we want something more important. Maybe we want something a little more fine grained. We want to put extra options in DHCP V6. Maybe that might be your next step. Um, there's other options too. Um, we're, we realize that we're not the only cloud operator that wants IPv6 and that there are other ways to do this. So maybe you want to use cloud in it, maybe you want to use metadata, that might be another option in, down the line, or prefix delegation. Uh, so what we're doing uh, at Comcast is trying to help with the Neutron v6 sub team to define all the requirements that are necessary to get dual stack to work in your environment. So the real reason for this, and you know, the, the primary purpose, isn't really to get all of the tools in OpenStack to be speaking V6 day one. We know that's not really uh, you know, an achievable goal. It's to get the endpoints to talk to each other. When you can get a V6 address on your host, on your VMs, on a Neutron port, on an LBAS port, whatever you have set up, when those things can talk to each other and to things outside of the cloud, step one's done. Right, that's the idea. Um, the problem with this though is that you can't have anything in V6 not be on parity with V4. So what we need is performance, we need the tunability, we need you to be able to pass packets at a same or similar rate that we do for V4, otherwise nobody will wanna use it. Um, the other thing is, you know, it's good to say we've got Slack and we can send packets up the network and an L2 flat network works. Cool, that's step one, again. Step two here would be getting away from just a flat L2 bridge domain and to go into things like overlay networks, GRE tunnels, getting IGMP or uh, getting IGPs and BGP to operate in the cloud. So Anthony and John have talked to you about where we came from, and where we want to go in the future. And as a Neutron developer, I'm going to bring you into where we are currently and how we're going to go into the process to, to realize the vision um, that has been set down. So back in October, um, Sridhar Bassam, uh, John Brzezowski, myself, and Anthony Vega sat down and do, did a hackathon for OpenStack to determine what changes would need to be made in order to get IPv6 um, provisioned on an instance that was booted through Nova using Nova Net, uh, using Neutron. So the result of this hackathon was that we've identified a number of changes um, and bugs that were filed and the fixes uh, in order to achieve this goal. So we had a small change into Nova. We had um, some changes that we identified to the security group API and then also some uh, difficulties with DNS mask. So we took all of these changes and we realized that we can't be the only one that is interested in IPv6 in OpenStack. So one of the very first things that we did was to publicly announce if there would be interest in forming 
a working group within the Neutron community to gather up all of the people that are most likely have found these issues on their own and try and coordinate all of this development effort towards a common goal. We also proposed a blueprint to create new, a new attribute for subnets to help drive the provisioning process of an actual IPv6 subnet within Neutron because the current uh, attributes that were part of the Neutron API were not sufficient. So as part of that, that original blueprint idea transformed through the community process into a new proposal of two separate uh, attributes. One that would deal with the addressing mode for Neutron and then also for the RA mode in Neutron. And the reason we split that up was that there are going to be some cases where a router that is actually providing routes for an instance is not orchestrated by OpenStack. It could be a hardware device. The point is, is that there's probably many different types of implementations and Neutron should attempt to support as many as possible and not make decisions for you. So all of this work was done in the community through the IRC meeting that we started on a weekly basis, um, the mailing list discussions that we had, and then also the blueprints. So this is a consolidated list of all of the possible values that we determined for an IPv6 subnet. Um, and what you'll see is on the left hand side, the attribute values for both the RA mode and the address mode, if it is actually a valid combination, and then what it actually turns into on the network, um, the flags that are set in an ICMP v6 um, packet that's transmitted on the network. So I'm also going to demo to you today through some screenshots some of the work that we currently have in progress that has been put into the community and is currently under review but is running in a lab environment to demonstrate that the patches we have are viable and that it accomplishes the work that needs to be done. So as you can see, we've created a V6 subnet that is going to be driven uh, by an external device, an external router, because you see the IPv6 RA attribute is blank. And then Neutron is going to use Slack and EUI64 to determine the address so that when you do API calls and Horizon, the address will show up properly so that the user has an expectation of, I'm going to launch an instance and I'm gonna know its IP address um, is uh, carried on. So as you can see, here's a screenshot of Horizon our, in our lab where we've launched a couple of instances demonstrating the V4 and V6 address that they are. All of these are dual stacked. And then if you have the next screenshot, uh, you'll see that in the side of the console, the instance correctly came up with the IP, uh, IP prefix and the address that it would ass be assigned and routes are ready. Um, as an additional step, you can see the properties of the network that we've created that is a dual stack network um, with both the IPv4 and IPv6 subnets um, being child objects of the network in the Neutron API. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Anthony for some of the caveats we have of our current design. So the idea was to support as many configurations as we could because we know that everybody's gonna have a different network. There's no one single silver bullet to fix IPv6 and Neutron. Um, that being said, some of the definitions in the RFCs go a little bit beyond what we can immediately calculate and uh, predict with Neutron. So privacy extensions is kind of a big problem, right? If you're gonna use Slack, some systems wanna use the privacy extensions mode to uh, calculate their address. And because of the nature of the way privacy extensions operates, it's a little difficult to calculate the address ahead of time that you're gonna use. So therefore, we don't technically support privacy extensions. You can use them, um, but we won't be able to enumerate your address in Horizon or in API calls. Uh, link local security also came up. So one of the things about IPv6 and the way it operates, uh, as many of you probably know, is that um, a router has to issue a router advertisement packet, or at least issue one after being solicited. Um, this causes a couple of small concerns around security. Uh, things like rogue routers or rogue RA, RA issuance become an issue. Um, we have patches in. Um, they haven't been accepted yet, but they're running in our lab demonstration that actually restrict down what you can and can't set as a value for an RA. So security groups will actually filter out RAs that aren't listed as a neutron router port. Uh, multiple addresses. So 
Unlike v4, v6 can actually add as many addresses as you want to an interface without breaking the stack. Um, while that's possible with Node, it's a little difficult to do in Horizon right now because Neutron doesn't technically support multiple addresses from the same subnet on a port. So while it's possible, we won't be able to handle it with the API currently. Um, and then there's the issue of floating IPs. So we know this is a sore point and it's something that needs to be fixed in the future. Uh, the current implementations don't actually have a method of handling um, uh, floating IP distribution. There's no way to assign them to a VM right now unless you continually pull metadata service. So right now there's no floating IP support. So what are the next steps? How do we move forward from here? Um, right now, there's a couple of patches in flight. Uh, there's plenty of reviews up in Garrett. Uh, I would encourage everybody to go take a look at the filter, look for the IPv6 flag to find all the, the patches that need reviews. If you can, please go take a look. Plus one or minus one, at least it's progress, right? Um, there are patches in right now for DNS mask. Uh, one of the big problems with all of the ways that Neutron currently handles uh, non-provider network is DNS mask is pretty much the end all be all for configuring a system. Uh, that's great in the v4 world where everything assumes DHCP at boot time. With v6, unless you've gotten an RA, DHCP isn't even gonna trigger. So we need DNS mask to be able to issue router advertisement. Um, DNS mask actually supports it implicitly in code, um, but the patches are in right now for us to be able to program that through the Neutron API. Um, there's a couple of different patches going through for different aspects of Slack and DHCP capabilities from a couple of different teams. Um, we've had some great participation from the uh, IBM team, Nefo6 and uh, Cisco, and there's a couple other people on the distribution that have uh, been involved. Um, there's the patches that we just demoed to you. Um, they're up in review, but like we just showed you, they actually work. Um, we're, we're using them today. Um, so there's other things that need to be addressed, right? The, the plug-in networks for L3, things like ML2 mechanism drivers that need to be able to handle things that uh, may not be the simple Nova network style configurations. Uh, all those are gonna need to be addressed. We need to be able to provide um, a V6 prefix, V6 advertisements, and eventually things, more advanced services like prefix delegation or being able to route. Um, the ACP V6 uh, has to be implemented. Um, like I said, we've got DNS mask supporting code, but the orchestration mechanism isn't there in the API. So if you've got uh, you know, some time to sit down and code and wanna deal with uh, the Neutron APIs, God bless you, but um, we could use some support in getting stateful and stateless into Neutron. Uh, routing's a big one. We know it's, it's also an issue for V4, but in the V6 world, it's actually a little more of an issue. If you wanna do things like prefix delegation, you actually have to have static route injection at least, and preferably a dynamic routing protocol enabled. Uh, and ML2 options, like I said, the, the orchestration between all the different uh, mechanism drivers isn't there yet, and if you own one, and if you're contributing to one, I'd encourage you to make sure it's dual stack enabled. Uh, prefix delegation, um, like I said, it's, it's a pretty big beast. There's, there's a lot of work to be done around it. Um, with uh, how we want to divide up networks, the allocation algorithms, how we want to assign them, how you want to handle um, hinting through uh, router, or, uh, router solicits and uh, DHCP, and how you want to handle routing down to those prefixes, or if you want to build them as sub-neutron uh, sub networks or not. And uh, like I said, there's other advanced V6 features, things like um, segment-based routing that could be used for uh, advanced network functions that are native to V6, but again, need to be enabled in Neutron. Alrighty, so back to me. So uh, I'm sure, Anthony, we would prefer plus ones instead of minus ones. And uh, you know, so we, we certainly encourage you to, to plus one things. Um, the, uh, the other thing that uh, we'll take note of here, or at least I'll make mention of to you, is we're doing a lot of work with the, with the developer of uh, DNS Mask. So a lot of the items that, that Anthony talked about from a DNS mask point of view as far as prefix delegation are concerned, you're gonna find will make its way into, uh, you know, probably the summer into the mainstream DNS mask code as far as prefix delegation is concerned, and even sub-prefix uh, prefix delegation for that matter, you know, because a lot of that functionality we're looking to use in, in, in other areas as well, not just OpenStack. Um, so, so as it was alluded to a minute ago, I mean, there, there are a number of things that we're also looking at from, a, from an OpenStack point of view, um, and, um, some of them intersect with the work that we're doing from a V6 perspective. Uh, Anthony talked about segment routing. 
Uh, I mean, you know, we're also looking at NFV and service function chaining. Uh, so there's a lot of work going on right now in, in the ITF. I don't know if there's a lot of people who kind of, you know, hang out at ITFs. Um, wouldn't surprise me if there was some intersection here, but, but that's definitely an area of interest for us. And, and truthfully, the bulk of that, from our perspective, is very much V6 only, right? So a lot of where we're taking our strategy for, for the network moving forward is very much V6 only. Um, you know, you know I, don't, I don't know how many of you feel about this, but from, from some perspectives for us, you know, there's, there's no more life in, in V4, right? So, I mean, we're, we have to continue to support it, um, but if the day is done, you know, we're looking to build you know, the, the network for the next decade, and, and from our perspective, V6 is a huge part of that, and a lot of the work that we're doing here is, is, gonna, be, is gonna be a cornerstone for that. Um, some of the things that we've seen over the years, anecdotally, and we're, we're also looking to do some, some research and papers here, is we've also seen that in, in some cases, and it's, it's actually, as a matter of fact, it was Anthony who, who kind of brought this to my attention years ago, and I didn't believe him at first, um, but uh, we anecdotally have seen that V6 performs better than V4 in some cases. We don't have um, all the raw data kind of analyzed just yet, but, but you know, I, I, uh, I, I basically told him I didn't believe him at first, and, and that was a pretty, uh, was a pretty bold statement from, from, from a person like me who's been doing this for a long time at, at Comcast. So that was, that, that, that's work that we're continuing to, to kind of explore. Um, and of course, you know, as we mentioned in the, in the front end of our, of our talk here, you know, from, and you know, OpenStack is a, is a critical part of all the things that we're, you know, we're gonna continue to do from a infrastructure and a product and services point of view. So from our perspective, making sure that it meets our V6 requirements and hopefully um, yours as well, you know, we're, we're trying to continue to advance support there. Um, and possibly even look at you know new services that we could that we could create that yeah, maybe would not be necessarily available um, you know either without cloud infrastructure or without um, or without V6. Next slide, Sean. So I think we are actually ahead of schedule, kind of. Yeah. So um, like I said before, there's a lot of stuff that's either in flight or not implemented yet. So how can you help? Um, we can't do it all on our own, we recognize that. We also recognize that there's, there's scenarios that you guys wanna implement that I might not have thought of or that Sean hasn't coded yet, so help. Um, requirements, if you've got them, please bring them to our attention. Write a blueprint, show up on the mailing list, discuss it. Uh, show up at IRC, have a chat with us. Um, join the sub team, speaking of IRC. Um, there's the link, slides will go up later, but there's a sub team in Neutron specifically dedicated to IPv6 that we've got some pretty dedicated people in and uh, that are pretty knowledgeable about V6. If you've got a question, even if it's just about how V6 works in general, show up, please, ask your questions. We'll be glad to help out. But if you want, I'd encourage you to join the, the sessions there and bring blueprints, bring, bring code reviews, bring code patches, we welcome everything. Um, code Neutron. Uh, Neutron itself needs some fixes, right? The API needs uh, a little cleanup, but in order for it to work properly for V6, we need to extend it as, as well. Uh, and please, uh, I'm sure you've heard it from every presentation you've been to for the past two days, but review, it helps a lot. Um, and elsewhere, so the cloud is, is a big thing for everybody and OpenStack is a great tool for orchestrating it, but there's also applications that run on it. And if you've got an application that's V4 only or uses what I'll call IPv4-isms that would prevent it from operating properly in V6, I'd encourage you to take a look at those code bases as well. So last but not least, wanted to kind of definitely, you know, reinforce the message here you know, it's free PR from our perspective for the people, you know, who we list here, but basically, you know, we're not the only ones, right? And we know, you know just over the past couple of days, there, there are many other people who are actually working on B6. You'll note that there are some very, um, there's some very, you know, recognized names on our list here, Facebook, Google, Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare. and of course, if you go to World B6 launch, you'll see a whole host of other people who are actively uh, deploying B6. Um, you know, and, and I have to say, um, over the past couple of years, there's just been an enormous amount of movement um, and it, you know, we, we certainly feel like there's you know, good company that, that uh, we're keeping on this front. So I think what we'd like to do now is turn it over for some Q&A. Uh, we have about 10 minutes for that, so by all means. Um, where do you, well, yeah. Where's the, where's the link? Your broadband connection? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the question was, is it working on your Xfinity yet? 
and it is, uh, or at least it should be, uh, depending on what kind of device you have. If you have a Comcast Verizon device, it absolutely should be. And the fact that you're asking me tells me that we did our job right, that you didn't even notice. I'm assuming that the state of Tempest for IPv6 tests is non-existent. Have you guys looked at contributing, or has the, anyone in the community been looking at adding to Tempest? So um, we're working with Enovance, um, uh, Sridhar Gadam, uh, to do some additional uh, patches to Tempest, along with Henry Gasal from uh, Cisco, uh, to start exercising portions of the API. And then we are also investigating uh, building more scenario tests to actively spawn instances, determine the IPv6 address that they have, and do all of the network verification steps that the gate currently does on the v4 side, as well as the v6 side. So yes, we are very interested in getting that um, as part of improving the quality of Neutron and ensuring that uh, patches will not break that functionality once it is landed. And the same kind of question for Riley as well, for benchmarking at scale. Unfortunately, I don't know very much about Rally, so we would certainly love to have somebody who's an expert in Rally um, inform us as to what we can help with. Yeah, I'd, I'd say for, for that, um, please show up to a, a V6 sub team meeting or shoot it to the mailing list and uh, start a discussion around it. Okay. Hi there. <coughs> My name is Patrick, and I must admit that I'm completely new to OpenStack, but I do run a productive uh, dual-stack network. And I thought it was common wisdom that you do not run router advertisements in a hosting environment. And my question is, why don't you simply use linked local addresses for default gateways? So, th yeah, that's a good question. Um, it, it, it is common wisdom in a static network style environment where you don't have an elastic compute setup that you don't run router advertisements because it's a security vulnerability. Um, we, we're kind of breaking that common wisdom because it may not be wisdom in a cloud system, right? So th the concept of elasticity in something like OpenStack means that I need to be able to provision new systems incredibly rapidly. I may not actually be able to provide the base OS, its configuration information up front. Um, what, you're set, what you're suggesting would actually require running something like a service VM to do local configuration uh, inside the Neutron network before a cloud uh, a VM can even instantiate. Or you're suggesting that it would actually have to have some intelligence in the base image to query a metadata service, uh, which is one way of doing it. And we're completely amenable to that solution as well. Uh, we just think it, it, there's extra possibilities because we control the network layer that we can also filter out RAs that shouldn't be coming from a device that's not actually a router. And because we can do that, we can actually prevent some of the vulnerabilities that you would normally see in the kind of static environment where there's no host layer controls that the host doesn't control, so to speak. Uh, things like security groups enable us to prevent the normal types of attacks you'd see with RA spoofing. As a, okay. as a part Thanks. of it, we also have um, patches that landed as part of the Icehouse cycle where we control uh, what ports and what IP addresses are allowed to transmit RAs that then are broadcast to instances as well. And that was uh, given to us by the, the people at IBM, uh, Zhu Han Peng. So we were aware of the problem and we are uh, attempting to address it as well. Yeah, we've been on top of it. It was actually filed as a bug uh, as soon as we implemented v6 Slack. And, and Patrick, just for you know, to, for technical clarity, you always need router. I mean, you, you should have router advertisements to get to at least learn the default route. Was your question around the also was it really oriented around Slack or was it actually the suppression of router advertisements overall? I, I suppress router advertisements in my network completely. We don't at all. I I, <laughs> I use some uh, link local high availability protocol like yep. HSLP uh, version two or GLBPP to provide a default gateway with a link local address. In, yeah, we, we, in, we, we all basically, of my, in all of my broadcast domains. Yeah, we, we use RAs, um, as a, and, and the link local address is really the only one, but, but we should talk afterwards, because that's been something that we, because one of the pieces of feedback, you know, when, when, I, when I first, you know, when we all first started talking here, one of the biggest things that we wanted to try to do is accelerate the way people could get their nodes online with V6 support, not kind of continue to have them jump through hoops and, and that sort of thing. So okay. it's, it, was, it, was, it was a conscious decision. I'd actually say that that's, that's a really good example of what I was talking about earlier in that um, we at the sub team can't 
dictate any one method, right? Uh, we can't know what everyone's requirements are. So uh, bring your requirements, come to the sub team, send a message to the mailing list. I would be glad to include your uh, provisioning method in the Neutron V6 capabilities. Okay. Talk to you later. Sure. Thanks. Are there any, uh, anybody actively using OpenStack with V6? Question? The only change that we've had uh, for Nova was in the libvert driver um, to disable hairpinning when you are using Nova with Neutron. And that was just so that if you're deploying uh, a network and you're using Slack, uh, you won't have a problem with duplicate address detection where the packet goes back into the instance and causes um, IP6 to fail. So uh, I, I think you might also have been asking about Nova network, yes? Yeah. Right, so, um, little political thing there, we're intentionally not backporting the Nova network. Uh, we think it might end up causing more pain in trying to get the seamless upgrade to work and that the cores would prefer it to be neutron only. So a uh, quick question for you guys. Any, anybody actively using V6 and OpenStack out there other than us? Really? Cool, I mean, we'd love to hear from you. I mean, I think, uh, we met before yesterday, but if there's anybody else, you know, please approach us and we, you know, we'd love to hear more about what you're doing. One of the things that we can share with you is uh, just last Friday, for anybody who's kind of familiar with V6, there's a, there's a fellow that we know, uh, Jason Fessler, who is the, basically the developer of test-ip6.com. Years ago, uh, probably about four years ago now, Comcast deployed a, ver a version of test-v6.com, so that, so that, or test-ip6.com, uh, and we basically gave it to FQDN uh, test-ip6.comcast.net uh, because we really felt it was a valuable tool for not only our customers, but it was also a valuable tool for, um, for our, my, you know, our coworkers to really kind of diagnose and, and troubleshoot things V6. Uh, just this past weekend, uh, you know, we, have, we have an OpenStack V6 enabled node that is now in the GSLB rotation for that service. And, and believe it or not, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, you know, I mean, it's not, uh, you're not talking huge amount of traffic, but but for a service that uh, you know for a service that is uh, you know basically used for testing and troubleshooting, it gets it gets used pretty heavily. So people use it a lot for validation. They want to know what their V6 address is. They want to make sure that their DNS uh, resolver and their servers are working well. So we recently put one of the one of the uh, the, the nodes in that GSLB rotation uh, on a, on an OpenStack cluster. And uh, to to everybody out there that raised their hand. Um, if, if you get some, some free time, I'd say uh, show up to either the dev mailing list or even the operator's mailing list because if you're using it, you're an operator. So if, if you've got experience running it, if you've uh, had any issues in the past and uh, ha had workarounds or no problems, uh, it, it's good to talk about it. It's good to hear from other people that are using it and what they're doing with it. All right, any other questions, comments, rotten fruit? All right, thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you.